I got some parts in and it's time to go to work on this old Jeep. It's a fuel pump. And a screen. Drop the full tank. more room to work on the tank in the back. <laughs> Easy. All right, now I need to get, get under here and start dropping the tank. That's the wrong way. Come on. All Should be the last one. Hey! Oh, shit! Alright. Well, that's all the bolts out. Tank's dropped. Well, uh, it's just the filler neck, I think, that's holding it up. Wow. All my rust proofing worked. Snake that through there. on the ground. Everything's slimy because I put coated it in uh, lanolin rust preventer stuff. 
can't remember what it's called, but it's made out of sheep's wool oil. Oh, that's gas everywhere. Oh, that's gas everywhere. Oh, dang it. Alright. All the hoses are off, so we don't have an electrical disconnect close by, so we're going to have to take the screws out and uh, pull this whole unit out of the gas tank from here. Yes. All right. Look how clean and everything looks. All right, it's the next day. Smells like gasoline in here. Gasoline from Cash Town. Well, this is where we left off. Flat fenders make a nice workbench. Got the old pump out. Wait, where's the new pump? There we go. I was comparing it to the new pump. Looks like it's gonna work. And we gotta throw it back in there. So one thing I just noticed <clears throat> in the kit with the with the pump that does not come with the screen there is when the screen goes on it just squishes on there pretty much just forms a seal and to keep it on, it's got this little tab that goes over this post. Um, I noticed in the box, can you see that? In the box for the screen, taped to the lid, is this little press nut. Basically, that would just slip down over the, that post and hold this thing on. The pump came with one as well. There you go, it's kind of focusing. Even though it didn't come with a screen, screen, it did come with that little nut piece. That goes over. Probably need to press it on there with a socket or something. Do that in a second. I did notice though that the old one did not have one on it. There's not even scars on there like it was ever pressed on. So there could have been jump getting through here. That's a pretty loose fit too. I was thinking that this stuff kind of looked new, but you can tell by the some of the plastic, it is pretty aged, especially you compare it to new stuff. Even though this part comes yellowed like that, the plastic is uh, 
You get this a lot with plastic in gas. It just yellows and gets brittle and age. So no telling what the uh, inside of this pump looks like. I'm sure it's got plastic parts too, so. All right, let's get this set up. There's a socket on an extension here. center it there just like that I don't know if you can see that on there that's on there good and tight This rubber thing is going to work on here. I don't want to use the old one. So. Trying to modify this metal bracket. I do want to have the lower support on there. Might have to shorten the hose too. In fact, yeah. Let's do that. safer to cut this on something but as long as I concentrate really hard I'll be just fine try to get the cut straight as possible too cool I don't know if you saw any of that but there it is get this back the tank under there and that back in the tank but first I want to get the straps up and down because there's no point in having those loose gallon mod on this tank okay so here we go with the 
20 gallon mod part of the video. I have seen where people have done this with the fuel tank still in the vehicle and just pull this off. Um, you can still get access to this when it's in the vehicle. Uh, and this is what we're looking at right here. And basically what we're doing here, if you haven't seen this before, is there's a tube. This, this one here is the vent, this is the fill. So when you go to the gas station and fill up your tank, it's coming in through this one and air comes back out through this one here. Well, this has an insert tube that slides down into the tank about 10 inches long. And since it's downward at an angle and it's letting air out so it lets fuel in, when the fuel gets up to the end of that tube all the way down in there and air can't get past the fuel anymore, then it signals the pump to shut off that your tank is full when you still got another five gallon capacity to fill up and so the mod the modification that you would do is to pull this tube out and shorten it so that the air can escape all the way up to the top of the tank there's nothing necessarily wrong with doing this they actually had an option for 15 or 20 gallon tanks, but they were all the same size tanks. They just had different length tubes in there is all they did. And there's probably something to do with the fuel gauge as well. But I'm going to leave that stock fuel gauge. There's probably some way you can bend the, the float on it so that it would show a more appropriate um, level on a 20 gallon tank. But... I'm just going to know that once it's past full, I still have another like five gallons in there that has to be used up before the, the gauge even shows accurately full. <laughs> so what we're looking at, let's see, get more light on there. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, there's actually an, a tube inside of a tube here. Oh, maybe I already did this. Okay. <laughs> did I do that? Or was this a 15 gallon already? Or a 20 gallon, I mean. At least now I have photo evidence I have done this. All right, well, put that back. Done. <laughs> okay, we got that figured out. Let's get this sucker under there. All right, it is now a few hours, many curse words, and busted knuckles later. But the almost full gas tank has been reinstalled. I've saved you the suffering of 
me putting that in and you can find plenty of videos on YouTube on how to uh, uninstall and install a gas tank. Let's see if we got fuel pressure. Keep your eye on the gauge. Hopefully we should see it come up to here. I can also use this to help bleed off any air in the system, which uh, may prevent me from getting full fuel pressure at first, but hopefully, fingers crossed, I got fuel pressure. Cycled it as many times as I could, where the fuel pump will come on, and it's at zero. Interesting. Well, let's see if we can burp off some air or something. What? Why? Tell me why. Let's just try to start it. I don't know. Didn't seem to do anything. Never even got to 31. Got high 20s. So I still have a fuel pressure issue, but I don't know if that's it. That's why it's running like that. I'm gonna put the uh, crank position, the old one, the old sensor back in and see what happens. Okay, well, put the old one, old crankshaft position sensor back in. Let's see what happens now.
test drive. Okay. Well, may have just changed the fuel pump for nothing. Apparently I got the wrong or a bad crankshaft position sensor. This is the old one back in it.
does seem way more responsive now. That's just idling down. put the old crankshaft position sensor back in it. I still didn't see the fuel pressure I wanted. I don't know. I still got to look into that, see what's going on there. But with the old crankshaft position sensor back in it, it was running really good. Uh, I couldn't get it to really necessarily stumble again. A few times it was idling a little rough. Um, but all in all, it ran really good. So I think we're good for now. Um, I got more parts and more fixes and more videos to make on this thing. I have a whole set of weather seals uh, and door gaskets and window gaskets and all that. So we'll be putting all that in um, as well as uh, doing a DIY repair on the inside of the dash circuit. Uh, circuit ribbon. I don't really have a circuit card. Um, Four-wheel drive manual fix for the uh, CAD as well as a little bit of body work left to do. But I think now that this is running really good, um, we're going to kind of put it aside, leave it be, and we'll get this garage in order and then start on the uh, Dodge Cummins project restoration on that. So that's going to do it for this time. Thanks for watching.